Good morning to everyone. My first speaker this morning is Olivier Picard from Paris, going to talk about the million root inequalities and his pandemics. <clears throat> Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here, especially for Oscar Sixth's birthday. Uh, I know Oscar from quite a long time ago. And uh, he was a postdoc in Marseille, I think. Earlier. Even earlier. You came to Orsay. Ah, ah, invited by Nigel, <laughs> actually, I think. <laughs> okay, okay, right. And, uh, and uh, so, then while we have been collaborating, uh, I've learned a lot of things from Oscar, mathematically, but also on other topics. And uh, for example, even on French culture, it taught me lots of things. <laughs> so, so thank you, Oscar. Yes. Hope we are not only you know, collaborator, but friends, and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so I will uh, speak today on about some works with actually were done uh, in collaboration with Oscar and other people and Milner Wood inequalities. So let me remind you, I suppose you have heard this a lot uh, yesterday. So the, what are we studying? We are, we have G, a group can be complex or real, but you know, it will be more real. And a lot of work of Oscar is about representations of a pipeline of a surface into a real group. Well, modulo conjugation and, uh, and the point of view is via the normal Avedian notch correspondence turned by Nigel with GX bundles. And of course, if I write a correspondence like this, I must take some simple ones here and polystable ones here. And well, if I have a real radio big group. Just to recall the, the notation, I have a carton decomposition here of the Lie algebra and the GX bundles, GX bundles that the principal holomorphic du bundle E and the X field, which is holomorphic one form with values in M. The bundle has a structured group, the complexification of H. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay, and stability, just to remind you, stability. You take a parabolic subgroup. An anti dominant character of the public group. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> hi, hi. Good, good to chat here. <laughs> Sigma uh, reduction to P of the structure group. And then we have a degree of this reduction, uh, which I uh, can not like this, with respect to the anti-dominant character, it can be defined just by evaluating the character on the curvature of some P connection on the bundle, and the stability that should be non-negative. 
and something special happens in case of equality, but I don't want to get into the details. Okay, so. So there is a well-known topological inequalities, inequality on this representation in case the symmetric space G mod H is Hermitian symmetry. And this was established by Berger, Yudi, Leonard, long time ago. And uh, actually with Oscar, And Roberto Rubio, we gave some X approach to this inequality, which I want to explain now. So this was published some, some years ago. And, um, okay, so. So the inequality says, I will precise so the words, it says that in that case here, there is an invariant, the Toledo invariant. Which is less than R to G minus two, where R is the rank of the symmetric space. And so the X approach is as follows. Uh, well, first, I need some uh, some uh, algebra. So there is an element J here in the car in the compact part such that when I look at the action of uh, Add G on the complexification of M. This has eigenvalues I and minus I. And this G actually gives a complex structure, and that's why the symmetric space is our mission. Now there is a Toledo character, what we call the Toledo character. Which is a character not of G but of HC. Uh, which differential is basically just given by this element G. It's so if I want to write in terms of the killing form. If B is a killing, form, it's a multiple of the killing form when I evaluate on minus IJ. And you have to divide by the dual Coxeter number. Uh, actually, there is a better way to write this. You don't need to take the killing form, you take any scalar product. Invariant scalar product. So this is in G, and what is gamma? So this is in G star, and you take a root in M. So the length of the root in M is turns out that for Hermitian symmetric spaces, all these roots have the same length. And this is invariant because this scalar product is in G and this one is in G star. Sorry? What's the dual factor? Is it for simple? Yeah, but uh, here, uh, 
actually this you can well you can calculate from this equality if you want but uh, uh, well there is another definition but actually this is the best uh, definition and then uh, it's easy to define the this Toledo invariant from this point of view is just a degree of the line bundle induced by the character. So this is uh, the way to see this Toledo invariant from the X perspective. Uh, in the tube type. Okay, so this is a special type of Hermitian symmetric spaces, like, uh, well, for SUPQ, for example, you have to take SU and N. Uh, well, I will come back to this later, I'll explain what it is. So, in that case, it turns out that there exists homogeneous polynomial. Uh, c'est P which is uh, of degree R the, the rank of the symmetry space and which is equivalent with respect to the action of H Equivalent and the, so this is related. P of H X is related to P of X, but there is a factor which is the character. Okay, and then there is an obvious case of this inequality. Which is when, well, such polynomials, because of the equivalence, you can apply it to the X field. And so the obvious case is that when you apply it to the, well, minus part of the X field, the one which is in the minus, suppose that it's not identically zero. Then, well, what is this? It's a section of. So we have a one form, but we take a degree R polynomial. So we take, we obtain Ks R, and because of this, here it's with values in a line bundle. If we have not this, it's just a section of Kr, but because of this, we arrive, it's received by this bundle. And well, if it's not a zero section, this bundle has non-negative degree. And this implies immediately that the degree of E of Pp is less than R times the degree of K, S, which is 2G minus two, and that's the minor root inequality. Okay, so that's really the, the easy case. Um, so in the general case, I will not explain exactly, but One new is stability inequalities to reduce to the previous case. Okay, so this involves uh, well construction of kind of subtube, maximal subtube, uh, in which the uh, X field phi minus 
takes values. Okay, so, and now there is a maximum case. Probably you heard about that yesterday, I guess. Oh. So the maximal case, that's when you have equality here in the inequality. So suppose we are in the tube type case. So then this implies that uh, the polynomial on C minus is not identically zero. And because we achieve inequality here, actually, it never vanishes. This does not vanish. And uh, actually, what does it mean on phi minus? It means that phi minus belongs everywhere to the there is a regular open orbit in M minus of the HC action, and it belongs everywhere to this regular orbit. Actually, the P detects exactly the non vanishing of P detects a regular orbit. P is the equation of the, the non regular part. Okay, and then this means that bundle reduces to the stabilizer of the regular orbit of regular element. Okay, and then actually the, in that case, the, yeah. So the data. <laughs> well, the data of the of the X bundle ah, some problems is the same as the data of this. Well, say reduces to so this gives some E prime of. Uh, each prime C bundle. And you can have a phi prime, which is just phi minus, the bracket of phi minus with phi plus, the phi plus part. And we, this is a section of k squared because I have two one forms here times. E prime of n prime c where actually you have a decomposition of h into h prime plus m prime. So this is the carton decomposition and actually h over h prime is symmetric and that's actually equivalent to the tube type condition. And uh, so uh, this is uh, actually a H star is normal. But with a difference that it's with K2, so it's K2 twisted. Where H star is a dual, the non compact dual. Okay, so this is the KD transformation. And we proved actually that there is a correspondence 
between the moduli space, between the polystable objects. Yes, yeah, there is only one regular open orbit. Yeah, yeah, for a given group. Okay, and so this kind of key transform has been uh, generalized uh, later by Oscar and collaborators to magical triples, and uh, this seems to be in relation with, uh, with positive representations in the sense of uh, Guichard of Vienna. Um, Okay, so what I want to explain now, <sighs> is what's happening in, in this theory when we add parabolic structures. And actually, It's a work we did with uh, Oscar and with Ignacy Mundet. Uh, we work completely what's happening in, uh, in the case of a real group when you have uh, punctures. Uh, what did I want? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, so you have um, on your surface, you have some mark points, and you want to consider now, of course, uh, representation with a non trivial monodromy around the punctures. And so, how do you do this? This, well, this is classical. So, now you, on the X field, you This is a sin via parabolic structure on E at the point X I, which is the following. So we have a, you have a reduction to a parabolic subgroup. Q I to add the point X I and you have a strictly anti-dominant character alpha I of Q I, which I see as anti-dominant character, which I see as a, an element in the compact. Uh, no, not in the compact, in I H. No, no, in the compact, sorry. sorry in the compact. And uh, so the idea is that this structure will encode the compact part of the monodromy. which with this convention will be exponential minus two pi alpha. And so when you do that, you have to choose alpha i. So it's in H, but actually what you want to encode is exponential. And so you have to choose it inside some vile alcohol. So we, you fixed a vial code once for all, and then can take always alpha in the vial code. Okay, and then when, when you have done that, the description is that phi can be meromorphic.
So D is uh, the divisor given by the points, and and uh, the residue at the points has to belong to the parabolic subgroup in some sense. Well, extended by alpha, extended to the, the whole group amount. Well, let me don't give too many details. Um, ah, and well, it's not, it's not so, it's simple like this when the weight is in the interior of the alcove. But if you are on the boundary in a, in the wall of the, the vial chamber, then you cannot describe uh, the field like this. You have to do something more complicated here. So I will not describe it, but uh, actually the uh, theory is much more complicated if you are on the boundary of the vial. Being in the interior is like a full flash like position. Yeah. Being in the interior, it's a, uh, yeah, it's uh, the inter no, it's uh, if you're in the interior, basically the alpha is uh, is unique, uh, given the, the monodromy, otherwise, it's not so. Typically, uh, if you take a same tour, uh, your, your alpha is given by alpha minus alpha. And you can always take alpha in zero one half. This is your vial alcove. But the, the bad case is when alpha, the weight is one half. So this is very bad. And then you cannot describe this way. Um, okay, so. So there are some change to apply in this case. Uh, so if you take a reduction to subgroup P with some character, uh, what was it, key? So you have a reduction sigma. So you want to define the, 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 the degree now. So it's the parabolic degree. Well, it's just the usual degree. But there is a, there are contributions at the point. And the contributions, they depend on some relative degree between a pair of parabolic subgroup with anti-dominant character. Uh, so what, what is this local contribution? Um, well, there are two interpretations that we give this paper. So I will use the first, basically. Um, it's well. So the first interpretation that it's a maximal weight, and I, I will not give uh, give much detail. The maximal weight in, uh, in GIT sense, lambda key of alpha i for the action of G, say, on G map P. And there is another interpretation. Uh, ah. Uh, 
Ne şu an? Okay. Uh, I have to figure out which flag manifold it is. I'm not sure it's not a GMT. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't remember uh, that well. I think it, I think it's GMT. Yeah, the point is that uh, it's not clear it's maximal weight in the, in the real case. In the complex case, uh, you have just a complex flag manifold usual, which is scalar. In general, we are not scalar, but we are only symplectic. But uh, still, it makes sense. And the other interpretation which we gave, which is quite nice, is you, if you look in the symmetry space, G mod H, take a point, and you consider exponential, you apply exponential T chi. And you hit some point in the boundary of the symmetric space. And you can do this for alpha i. And so let's say that this is eta of t, the, the point at infinity, which is defined, given by this geodesic in the symmetric space. And we have actually this. Relative degree is minus the cosinus of the t distance between uh, these two points. So the t distance you obtain, uh, for example, you, you take points here on this geodesic, and you take the geodesic going to the other points here. And it's uh, the, the angle here goes, and it's the limit of the angle here. Okay, so that's quite a nice intrinsic interpretation. In particular, there is a surprising symmetry here between the two, uh, the P and the QI, because it's a distance. Ah, okay, sorry. sorry. Uh, it's, in order to, for this to be true, I have to normalize uh, by the norm of key and alpha i. This makes sense because actually alpha is defined in the in the Lie algebra and key in the Lie algebra dual. Okay, so. And then, once you have this, the theory extends. Extends. So the the mean wood inequality in particular, so if G mod H is a mission symmetric, the Toledo invariant will be now the parabolic degree of E of kt. There is some parabolic uh, weight induced on E of kt. And uh, which is actually, so this is the Toledo invariant. It turns out that it's just so the usual degree minus the sum of the infinitesimal character applied on alpha i. And now, now well, uh, the Toledo inequality, the Minerwood inequality, well, at least if I am in the naive case where this P of phi minus is uh, non trivial. But then I guess I, I, I have an inequality like this, but is meromorphic with simple poles. So I have 
an additional one here for each mark point. And, uh, well, it turns out that uh, because of this condition, which I have not given precisely, uh, and because this contribution is a maximal weight, which comes from the GIT, this has a sign. It's actually non negative. And so this is an inequality. So this is actually the sign and equality is achieved if and only if uh, the residue at xi of phi minus commutes with alpha. Again, that's in the regular case where, where we are not on the boundary of the viral core. So I don't say what's happening on the boundary. Okay, so in particular in the maximal case, what's happening? So, which one? Which one? This one? Yeah. No, no, it does not come from the stability of the bundle. It just comes from the fact that uh, uh, the residue of the field is not anything. It has to be in some parabolic subalgebra. And uh, then from the disease definition, as a maximal weight, it implies a sign. And this, has, this term is, uh, so here I gave the proof somehow for the the generic case where the polynomial does not is not does not completely vanish, but then, of course, again with the stability uh, using stability inequalities, you can prove in general the inequality from this perspective. Okay, but in the maximum case, so you see that uh, phi minus again has to be regular everywhere, including the residue. Uh, if we want to achieve the equality, so including. Residue and and this has to be zero. So the residue has to commute with alpha i. Okay, and so this tells us that. Again, you have this scaly transform, so you have this H prime C reduction. And this tells you exactly H prime C. Recall what is H prime C? It's a stabilizer of the regular orbit. So this is an element of the regular orbit. So it tells you that the H prime I has to be in H prime. And so it tells you that you really get H prime C parabolic bond. And the weight also is in Japan. Okay, let me not give much more detail. Uh, there is a case when you are on the boundary of the alcove, it's more complicated. You don't get this condition, but you have to do some egg transformation to, uh, to prove this kind of statement. And I think uh, so. Uh, so there is, I guess, some uh, generalization again to this magical triple and this uh, so parameterizing this uh, Teichmuller components, which corresponds to positive bundles, and which we have worked on progress on this with Oscar and Brian. Okay, and I have uh, some minutes left. 
to, to talk about my uh, last topic. which is uh, about variations of a structure. And this is some work we did recently with Oscar, with Brian. And with Domingo Toledo. So when you study this uh, spaces of representations, what is very important is that you have the sister action. And the fixed points of the sister action So this was studied by, by Carlos a long time ago. Uh, so what's happening? They arise, they all arise in the following way. So there is a Z grading of the D algebra. There is a, a gradient element. And then you have a G zero bundle. And a X field which is values in the G minus one. You can consider such pairs. And of course, this gives you a G X bundle done by extending the group to G and taking C. And well, this is a fixed point because if you add, if you act by, uh, if you act by exponential t zeta, this will give an isomorphism here, and this will multiply, this will multiply the phi by exponential minus t. So this this is a, a fixed point of the sister action. And uh, actually, all fixed points arise in this way. So this is this moduli space we call M of G zero, G minus one. So this is a, a component of the of the locus of fixed points of the sister action. So there is a real structure involved here. Yeah. Because a priori here, I have only a complex group. I start not from G, so uh, it's an abuse of notation. I want GC, but G is not given here. I give only the GC, the complex group. And you can recover, actually, the, the real group from uh, this data. Uh, well, okay, quickly. So there is a carton involution. And there is, uh, I think, yes, there is a compact field form, right? So which commutes with theta and the, the composition gives a real form. 
par the group. So there is a real group involved here. Okay, so then when you, when you look at uh, the X bundles arising this way, um, and the corresponding representation, so there is a harmonic map which corresponds to this, which is here in the symmetric space G mod H0. No, no, sorry. So the, it's here, G, and I think. Yes, there is a harmonic map is here. It goes to G mod G, G mod uh, H, which is a symmetric space. Because the, the group modulo is compact. Form, which I have not written here, maybe. And you can divide by G mod A0, and this is actually a period domain. And the map lifts, it's exactly the meaning of this structure, the map lifts here to the period domain as the holomorphic horizontal map. So for example, one simple example, we have some color, is you can have a G is so to PQ. And then here you have SO to PQ. Uh, okay, so SO to PQ over S of O to P OQ. But here it's over UP OQ. Yeah, yeah, three minutes. Okay, so. What I claim is that in this situation, there is a similar minimal root inequality, but which is better than the previous minimal root inequality. That is, if your symmetric space happens to be a mission symmetric, that you have such a map, you get an inequality which is better, which is not the same. Uh, so, uh, which we call an arachel of minor inequality because it's related to the inequality that you get on a that you get on a, on variation of a structure. So there is a Toledo invariant again. It's the general. It's very quick because it's completely similar now. There is a totally different variant, which is given by the gradient element. So it's the same formula I had before. Minus IG was actually a gradient element in the emission symmetric case. And gamma, so here there can be several routes, and you take a long route in G minus one. Or G1, it's the same. This is the square of characters. It's, it's the character, not the environment. It's the character, yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. It's the character. But you understand, of course, quickly that the Toledo invariant is when you apply now this character. Okay. And well, what's not clear is what is the rank, because there is a well-defined notion of rank for a symmetric space, but not for a period domain, a priori. So since I have no time, I don't give you the notion of rank, but there is a notion of rank. I can just tell you, maybe in the case of the example, what the rank is in the example. 
the rank is twice the minimum of P and Q. And uh, well, then we get an inequality which is pretty much the same. So the rank of this period domain times 2G minus 2. And the proof is similar. There is a tube type case, which is when the gradient element is one half of some H, H between being the H of some SL2 triple. And this is like exactly the tube type condition in the emission symmetric case. And in the tube type case, it's similar. So what does it mean? There is a polynomial, that's the key in the proof. There is an invariant polynomial which is equivalent actually with respect to this character. And uh, what's not obvious is where does this polynomial come from? Uh, it turns out there is a all uh, well-known algebraic theory which tells you that this G minus one in this situation is what people call pre-homogeneous. It was proved by Vinberg, which means that the action of G zero has only a finite number of orbits, especially there is one orbit which is open and dense, so there is a regular orbit. And uh, all this theory developed by Sato and others also tells you conditions in order for such polynomial to exist. And uh, it turns out that in this tube type case, we can prove that there exists such a polynomial. And therefore the proof that we, which I explained at the beginning of the talk applies. And so we have an equality case, and maybe just to finish with something concrete. So what does it mean here for this example? So we have SO to PQ. P, Q, P. So there is a G minus one, which is here, and there is a G minus two, which is here. And uh, so uh, X bundle here will be given by a V which is a SOPC bundle, V plus W plus V star. And if you look well, uh, all the definitions, the inequality which is obtained is as a degree of V. The maximum is the minimum of P and Q, uh, which is an inequality that you could uh, Obtain by stability, maybe uh, playing with playing with this object. But actually, uh, I did that a long time ago. It's it's quite difficult. It's quite tricky to obtain this just uh, from stability. Uh, there are lots of um, steps, but uh, it comes directly and quite easily from general theory. Okay, we stop here. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? So you have here the Toledo character in this situation of variations of Pouch's structure, but in the theory of um, Sato uh, that you allude to, pre homogeneous vector spaces, there are other characters that are very interesting as well, right? Like in yeah. the case of uh, when you take here GLNC and you have the fixed points that are chains, there are other um, inequalities that, uh, that were analyzed with Johann Heinlöth and so on. Can you comment on that? If there is any hope of getting those yeah. other uh, yeah. invariants and inequalities? Yeah, yeah, there are uh, there are other characters because uh, of course the G zero has a larger center, so there are other characters. Uh, yes, yes, my guess is that there are other inequalities. Uh, but well, you know very well we have not found a, a simple way to to produce these inequalities. This one is a privileged one. 
because it comes from the guiding element. And the, the theory that we have seen in the emission symmetry case somehow applies uh, directly. But of course, you have to find what is equivalent to each object in the emission symmetry, but it applies directly. Uh, while for this other current character, it's not that clear. So there is still maybe there's still work to do here. Okay, some more questions? Yes, Karen. Yeah, you said something about the compact part of the local monodromy transformations. Yeah. Uh, how do you see the non-compact part of those? Those can possibly be in be have a non-compact part, right? Yeah, yeah. And sure. wh where do those come into the into the structure? As it comes through the, the residue of the Higgs field. Okay. So so the Higgs field is not being assumed to be strictly parabolic. It's no, 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 okay. no, no. It's in the I said it's in the parabolic subalgebra. It's not in the null potent part. Ah, okay, okay. And but it, uh, there must be conditions on the residue that come from the real structure, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, the, the, it, the, the real condition means that the residue has to be in the M part when, uh, when you do the carton decomposition, but that's all. There is no further condition. But in this M, you have the, the, the trace amount of the parabolic subalgebra, and you have to be in this piece. So the M sort of has a, an image inside the quotient of, of the, inside the Levy quotient of the parabolic subgroup or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to fix the conjugacy class of the monodromy, you have to fix, actually, uh, well, you know that very well, I guess. You have to fix the conjugacy class of the projection on the Levy part of the residue. Right. Okay, thank you. More questions? Well, if not, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>